Good morning. I pray all is well. I pray that everyone have a great start to the week today. I want to talk about um, something that I saw yesterday when I logged on to YouTube. I've been off of social media for a while and I just decided to come back on yesterday. So what's being talked about is um, Kirk Franklin's conversation with his son and how he you know how he was communicating with his son who was a 30 something year old man as a parent and as a saved parent myself you know I understand and I'm, I'm sure a lot of you do too understand what it's like to you know, to try to parent kids and put them on the right path and how when they reach a certain age, they think they know anything. They know they no longer want to listen to you. Sometimes they get disrespectful and they get out of line. And I know as well as some of you know, nothing can pull us out of character like our family. That could be um, you know, children, siblings, parents, whoever, because family, they just have a way. They just have a way of taking you to a place that you never thought you would go again. They have a way of taking you there. And that's, that's true. And a lot of us who are saved, you know, we, we can get on these pedestals if we want to and try to look down on this brother and judge him knowing that we ourselves, if we haven't already, we surely are capable of, of um, getting angry and doing and saying probably worse than he said and done. And that's just the truth. You know, none of us are perfect. All sin and fall short of the glory of God. And we know that when you are trying to live right, when you're in Christ and you're trying to live right and do right, the devil comes against three things, your faith, your family, and your finances, because he knows one of those three things are sure to um, put a limp in your walk. They're sure to, you know, to wound you in some type of way. Your faith, your family, and your finances. If he can't get you through your faith by trying to get, you know, making you question God, making you think about walking away from God and all that kind of stuff. If he can't um, get your mind off of God by attacking your finances in whatever way he can, then he's going to come at you through your family. He's going to, and that's just a fact. That's a fact. So I'm not going to, I'm not standing in judgment. I'm going to stand in the gap. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that um, God will work things out in their favor, that there will be reconciliation if that's possible, you know, that there will be forgiveness and that they can move on from this because we all go through things. We all go through things with our families. I'm a living witness. And sometimes when you can't get along with them, you got to get along without them. And that's just the truth, no matter who they are, because the devil uses those closest to you to try to destroy you. It's not the people across town. It's not even your worst enemy. It's the ones who are related to you by blood and the ones you choose to call blood, you know, close friends and family members. That there's a reason when when um, things happen to people that the the investigation starts first with family and friends because it's usually family and friends who are the um, who are the culprits in the demise of the person or the downfall of the person. So I'm just gonna stand in the gap for prayer. I'm gonna pray that um, God will work it out for their good whatever it is that's going on because as a parent myself you know it, it parenting is one of the hardest jobs you will ever have it really is it's, it's not easy it's difficult and when these kids grow up and have their own kids they'll understand that but i was saying in the other video that i had to delete because i couldn't figure out how to restore my sound um, a lot of times we overindulge our children. We try to give them things we never had. We try to give them the life that we wanted 
and never got. And in the process, we overindulge them. We spoil them. You know, we don't want them to go through anything. And truth be told, if they were allowed to go through even a tenth of the things we went through as kids, some of them would be better people because they would understand what struggle is. They would understand what it's like being in a family that tries to devour you. And you, you, you know, you got to be tough to survive in your own family. You know, but we, we shelter them. We, we try to protect them from every little thing. You know, they, they'll go through things. Of course, they, you know, they never tell us everything they go through coming up. And they'll go through things. We'll never be able to protect them from everything. But we have to let these kids live. We have to let them learn. You know, we've done our jobs. We raised them. The Bible said train them up in the way that they should go. And when they're older, they won't depart from it. But we know that sometimes they do depart. And that's where prayer comes in. We can't force these kids to live, you know, to do what's best for them, to live a life that's going to be productive and fruitful for them. Because when they reach a certain age, now we don't know anything. You know, as if we were never young before, as if we were never <laughs> dumb before, you know, you, you grow up and you go through things and you, you live and you learn. So I've taken that approach with mine. I, I, you know, when they, my son first left home, I was so, um, nervous for him because I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, he really hasn't, the, the boy had never had a job. He didn't have to, you know, my husband wanted him to work and I did too, but that's not something that he wanted to do. So we, we didn't push it. We didn't force him. He had two cars, you know, we had bought the boy two cars by the time he was um, 16. So, and even with my daughter too, her first car was, was our old Lexus. So we, we spoil our kids. And of course they'll always find some area you know, or some, something to, oh, you didn't do this for me or you didn't. And that's with every, I don't care who you are. You can be the best parent in the world, you know, and, and your kid would always find something that you didn't do for them or something that you could have done better for them. That's it. You know, but uh, with me, I feel no regrets for how I raised my kids. I disciplined them. I did not spare the rod. You know, I disciplined them and I also showered gifts and, and love and things. I, I tried to give them what I never had and always wanted. And in the process, when we do that, we sometimes create, you know, ungrateful children, ungrateful entitled children, you know, so gosh, I'm... <laughs> Me and this, you know, I'm going to cut that. You know, I'm working on that. But um, these kids, honey, it's a different generation. It's a, it's a different generation these days. It really is. But as long as you've done your job, you've trained them up in the way that you should, they should go, you've protected them, you provided shelter, you, you provided food, clothing, finances and everything else that they needed. Once they get out on their own, their life is their own. Now, <coughs> pardon me, now we only act as counselors. We act as comforters. We act as um, encouragers. You know, we're there for them, but their life is theirs. And I, what I really hate is when people blame the parent for adult children, the mistakes they make. You it, No, don't do that. Don't do that. that uh, at a certain age, you develop your own mind, your own personality, your own will. You're an adult. You do what you want to do. But I, I just want to say that I'm not going to ever stand in judgment of of any brother or sister in the faith who is going through, because we know how the devil works. We know he comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. We know that there is none perfect under heaven, that we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. You know, it's, it's him today, but it could be either of us tomorrow. 
I would never say what I would never do, you know, because never approve you a lie every time. <laughs> It really will. Life is just, life is not easy. And trying to live a saved life is it, in this generation, in this culture now, being saved is a text almost more than, it, it, look, it, it's people just have, have it out for saints sometimes. And let me, let me clarify what I'm saying. When, in this generation that we're living in, when you're trying to live right and you make any little mistake or any little thing happens, you know, that's an indictment on your faith. Oh, I thought you were saved. If you were saved, you wouldn't have did this. If you were saved, you wouldn't have did that. The Bible is full of people who were men and women of God who made mistakes, who did things that they shouldn't have done because they're human, just like we are. We're human. We love God, but we're human. We're flawed. We're going to fail. We're going to fall. We're going to make mistakes. That's life. I had a person tell me when I became ill years ago, I thought you were saved. As if my falling ill was, you, you know, because I'm saved, I wasn't supposed to get sick. And that's a lie straight from the pit of hell. You know, if you read your Bible, you will see all the things that the people of God had to endure. But their faith kept them. Their belief in God kept them. So I just pray the best for the situation. I pray for all families today. All families, because we need it. We need it. All families everywhere. I plead the blood of Jesus over them. I pray for peace. I pray for healing. I pray for forgiveness. I pray for reconciliation. And I also, you know, sometimes you, you can't make peace with people if they don't want it. So I pray for wisdom to know when to walk away, when to close the door until the time is right. Because not everybody wants peace. Not everybody wants forgiveness. Not everybody wants reconciliation. Some people thrive on conflict. They thrive on chaos and confusion. So I just pray for every, every mother, every child, every parent, every family. I pray that God would just bring healing. That whatever the enemy is trying to do, that God will turn it around for their good. I just pray for, I, I'm praying for families on today. Have a wonderful day, everybody. God bless you.